hope you can hear me well. Um, I want to talk a bit about monitoring of hard rock environment using ambient seismic noise. Um, hello. We have kind of technical problems here. Okay, maybe I'll just talk about without any slides. So the idea of my PhD project was to confirm studies that are already made about um, observe the earth tides from uh, DV over V measurements and spectral analysis, like in papers from Mao et al. or Christoph. Um, but there are some challenges and problems, not real problems, but challenges. Um, for example, they use either autocorrelation or a mix of auto and cross correlation, and there are some problems um, regarding um, sensitivity kernels and interpretation. So we try to do it. Uh, purely based on cross-correlations. Um, I'm a bit annoyed by this computer, but yeah, fine. Um, yeah, so how we try to um, solve this problem, uh, we look for a very small array um, in southern Germany. <laughs> Thanks for, I choose the... It's kind of weird, but yeah, it's fine. Um, try to remember my slides. Um, yeah, so we choose a very small array in southern Germany, um, which allows us to do high temporal uh, resolution in higher frequency range to be uh, not dependent on the first and secondary micro sizing. Um, so the idea was to uh, calculate this DV over Vs um, for a long time range uh, for example, one year, and then do a spectral analysis uh, in sliding windows uh, to reveal the frequency content. And the idea is that the effects which deforms our Earth periodically, like temperature or Earth tides, have the same periodic pattern as our DV over V measurements. Um, so we expect a very strong one cycle per day frequency and 1.93, because this one uh, is from the uh, lunar tides. But uh, after multiple uh, reprocessing -pre and different uh, techniques to calculate those DV over Vs, no 1.93 peak shows up in the data at all. So it's kind of the same problem that uh, Josef already talked about, uh, but we have a very strong two cycle per day peak. So yeah, that's, that was a shame because we were really tempted to see those uh, M2 peak, uh, but we tried to find some uh, other explanation for that. And there's, um, one natural effect, which has a very, very strong two cycle per day frequency, and this is the um, atmospheric tides. I have not, nothing to do with gravitational tides, it's just a daily variation of the air pressure and the loading. So, yeah, we try to explain uh, those uh, frequency uh, peak with, uh, with the atmospheric tides, but this will mean that we have a very strong um, influence of water in the shallow subsurface and also that the sensitivity of our measurement is quite shallow. Um, yeah, so there are some new perspectives and new questions. Um, for example, maybe our DV over V measurements are even more influenced by water than we think about. Also, my frequency uh, range is uh, within the sensitivity of the uh, pore pressure change kernel of Eldert. So I'm pretty excited to explain those effects. Um, yeah, and also, if you think of geothermal reservoir monitoring, they uh, yeah, kind of monitor an aquifer, and if this aquifer is uh, deformed or influenced by those atmospheric tides, you will have a very strong background signal in these monitoring studies. And another step would be um, we try to find some cooperation partners in hydrogeophysics to maybe um, characterize aquifers completely by using DV over V measurements and be more independent from uh, borehole wells uh, in you know, groundwater research because they're very sparse and yeah, would be also more cost efficient. So yeah, thank you and sorry for the technical problems.